Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Doomcast number 46. My name is Doug Owen, senior editor of BlacklistedNews.com. And as always, Charlie McGrath is with us. He is the editor of WideAwakeNews.com. And, of course, our website dedicated to this show is Doomcast.com. The handle at Twitter is Doomcast Show. That is really all you need. And, of course, the website, Doomcast.com. What's up, Charlie McGrath? Welcome. Hello, welcome, or thank you for your welcome. Welcome to your show. <laughs> welcome to my show. I feel, I feel like I've been here before. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know, 45 other times before. You know what, Doug Owen? This is now, I I got to say, all right, so I've been doing, uh, probably since 2010, doing a rinse, right? This is the most consistent program I've done. It's really? the most consistent. I've, ne- I've never missed one, neither of you. We've never missed a week in 40 Five weeks. That's I missed. I actually missed one. But the, the oh, that's got, right, Carla, Doomer Carla, Doomer yeah, Carla. She sat in. <laughs> she sat in. Talked about how to love a conspiracy theorist, to love a crazy guy, a libertarian. Yeah. It's got to be. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Yeah, gun tote, a gun toting libertarian. You, you, you gave a bunch of preppers hope that there is somebody out there that wants to jump into the doom cave with them. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe a little bit of hope, but uh, you know that even even me, right? Who who is his goal in life uh, is to do this full time, actually. And there are great people out there that are pushing us closer to that. And we're definitely going to give you guys a mention here uh, in a little bit. But uh, even me that that is, you know, trying to stay on top, try to stay on top of all the political action going on, geopolitical. Uh, it's hard. Even a, a woman who loves me dearly, it's hard sometimes to uh, to, uh, you know, for these people that are not so dedicated to hear this kind of stuff over and over and over again. Do- and Doomcast probably, Doug Owen, has, I, I don't know about you, I'm going to speak for myself, it has, uh, it has remotivated me in the other, I mean, you might, I don't know if how close, I know you watch some of my videos, but it is re, it is reinvigorated me that I have this place to go and vent, right? To vent and to laugh and to, you know, uh, kind of just unload and be a normal guy for an hour. Uh, even if it is, you know, we're sticking on these topics that we do, but it, it's, it has been, you know, somewhat of therapy for me and it's helping me in my, uh, more serious stuff that we, you know, as far as serious in nature, uh, but my commentary videos and that kind of thing, it's, it's, it's helped me because I've had a vent. I've had an outlet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You get to do color commentary and it's not nearly as maybe depressing as some of the other headlines and uh, things that you cover on yeah i mean uh, one of the great things is that you know we also have doomcast.com where you've been putting up some pretty compelling videos we had yeah. one from producer that ain't me craig. you know who that is producer craig he had a good one too with the with the uh uh prepper look i'm steamrolling now uh prepper comic book but um and he's also he grabs every video i do and put up there greg's craig's a a, a machine you know he's he's making sure that there's something fresh up at uh, doomcast.com all the time. So my hat's off and applause. That's golf clapping yes. for producer Craig. And okay. give us give us his handle on Twitter because it's funny. Producer Craig 33. Yeah, sick individual. Why? <laughs> 33. He's he, he's hanging on the 33. Uh, I don't know if there's anything he's, necessarily evil Yeah, sick, about in, sick in a good way. I didn't say he's evil. I said he's a sick individual. It's sick in a funny way. Yeah. Well, I, I it's a joke. It's, you definitely have to be on the inside to get it. Yes, definitely. Yeah. 33 yeah. doesn't mean to to most, but it certainly does to us. And he did. Yes. Yes. And he put out a great video on uh, um, his uh, Doomer book, his Doomer. That was actually a pretty interesting magazine. Did you watch that video? I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. So good Check job, Greg. Keep it up. Doomcast.com if you want to get more. I mean, we're kind of talking about stuff here that's not necessarily relevant if the listeners haven't already watched this, but yeah. you, you should. Uh, Craig, are you Greer telling us? To, are, you, are you telling me to move uh, along? No, 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 no. Okay, just you know that uh, for those that that aren't uh, privy or that haven't yeah. been following the website, that have been following your YouTube channel, the Spreaker channel, they're just getting the show on iTunes because it pops into their feed. You know, you know, we've gotten a lot of feedback this week uh, from a, a lot of people. The the numbers have been pretty consistently uh, better, and so really excited about that. It, it's it's summer too, and usually this is a bad time for podcast media. If you look at the mainstream Absolutely. media, this is the grand finales are, are all over with, and so now 
uh, you know, the, the people aren't at school, the students that usually read the websites, listen to the shows, they're, you know, vacationing or, or doing something maybe less doomy, hopefully. <laughs> Some of you may be taking a break and that's uh, not always advantageous, but it, it, to us, because, you know, the support it dwindles, but at the same time, uh, you know, it, it, it's a great, uh, it's a great uh, I, I, number, I, numbers game to see that the, that it's it's so high considering that. That phenomenon. Well, listen to this. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. And I was whining, what, a few weeks ago, like in 43 or whatever, because we were, it seemed tapering off on views on the YouTube. And then you guys talked me off the ledge saying there's so many other outlets for it uh, that, that people can grab it from. And, you know, that makes perfect sense. I really don't think that the momentum is slowing uh, on, on Doomcast, but, you know, more and more people are picking it up and sending it. And we're sitting at nearly 4,000 uh, downloads from YouTube alone, Doug Owen, on uh, last week's Doomcast 45. So that's, to me, impressive. Uh, you know, very much uh, all-time high for one week. In fact, didn't we, oh, we recorded that on Wednesday. So one week, uh, 4,000 listens. And it's, you know, that's an hour and 13 minutes. And those numbers keep growing. And it, it gives me hope that, you know, that maybe one day we're doing this uh, five hours a day, Doug. I would do it in five a Five hours a day. My God, no. I'd, I, I would, if that's all we had to do, if that's... Five if we, hours a day? That's a lot if, of talking. That's I'd a do lot it. of analyzing. I would do it. I, I, I would. would I, I would put in eight hours a day. I wouldn't talk for five of them, though. I, I hope that uh, I, 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 people I, would get pretty uh, sick of that. I think that you know three. Then a three-hour program. We have to go back every to the, day. The, back to the basics, Charlie McGrath. Less is more when it comes to right. some things. All right. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. We'll be back <laughs> next week with uh, forty-seven. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Stay tuned uh, to the yeah. website for everything else that it, we're not going to talk about. Well, okay, how about this? If we could get to the point, Doug Owen, some philanthropist out there that wants to, uh, you know, sugar daddy, back, sugar daddy wants to back this thing, and, and we could get to the point where we put out a daily program, even if it's an hour. And, but we I could, could, oh, yeah, I could do that. I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously, and just in case anybody's wondering, if we did an hour show daily, I mean, that would be tantamount to, uh, an eight hour day. We're going to do a lot of research and, and a lot of, uh, uh, the work. biggest shows that are out there, Rush. I mean, just go through whatever uh, you know outlet you want. Three hours is usually usually the max on right. anything. So I think that anything beyond that would be. Just, yeah, you did uh, mention Opie and, Opie and Anthony at one point. I think uh, three, way back. Yeah, three hours. Yeah. Well, they do five. They do three on. They do three on uh, on uh, terrestrial. And then they do two on whatever serious or something. I mean, it's, like that. it's great. It's it's fun talk, but. What they're doing doesn't require a lot of research most of yeah. the time. They're having yeah. guests. They're having other comedians. They're just bringing in. And, they're yeah, if you want to do that, it's kind of the inner. And that's really all they're doing is putting out an entertainment show. So, I mean, what we're doing is a little different. It's yeah. infotainment. Yeah, I, I would agree that it, it's a different. Uh, yeah, I would agree with the infotainment. I don't know if I like that word, but uh, I'll agree with it. Why not? Uh, people. Uh, well, know. because I referred to I, I've spent, you know, several years referring to Fox, CNN, MSNBC and all these alphabet uh, government sponsored networks as infotainment because they, it's not they real are. news. They're doing the yeah. same thing. They're just doing it with women's legs and, uh, you know, showing you Megyn Kelly's chest or or whatever it may be. We're doing it with. Uh, it's so blatant. It's so blatant. <laughs> Squirrel <laughs> recipes, talking about scopes on guns, talking about the new world order, politics, and uh, I don't know, the sad condition of a lot of people that we can find some hilarity in. <laughs> You're a sick guy, too. All right, right on. Well, the world is plenty jacked up this week, and, and I'm sure you've been uh, you know, really paying attention. <laughs> As to... the world turns, another jacked up week here in the new world order. It, even, even more so. I mean, I've just got this this compelling feeling that that we are uh, about to see some major major uh, action i i'm terrified we're going to have some kind of uh, deal inside of iraq where we're we're helicoptering out the last of our 5000 uh, people from the largest embassy in the world not uh, you know something like we saw in hanoi when they were trying to evacuate uh, the last of the people in the embassy there uh, isis on the move do you want to start there what do, what do you would you uh, bring that you want to go with uh well you know I've got some Hillary clips I do want to talk about gun control a, bit, a little bit but I don't want to make Craig's head blow off and you go into a tirade so I'm kind of trying to figure out how to couch that into it so we can talk about ISIS uh 
No, I, I, I want to go off on a tirade about the Second Amendment. I mean, that, there's nothing wrong with that. No, we should uh, save but, that for the middle of the show. I want to tease that right. out. Hillary Clinton, if you didn't, yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, she's been she's been all over the place. She's obviously obviously the front runner, you know. And oh my God, we're gonna get her. That's what we're gonna get for the president. The, right, there's so only... we're already talking about her. I guess we should should play the clip here. Do you want to hear? Well, it? it's Have a big deal. I, I've heard. I've watched her on um, NBC. I watched her on uh, uh, on Fox as well when she gave an interview there. But go ahead, play play what you're gonna play. All right, this one's gonna probably uh, anger a lot of the listeners and probably sicken you a little bit, Charlie McGrath. Do you All have right, a barf bag close? Wait, let me let me let me get it. Let me get my barf. <laughs> yeah. All right, I got I got it here. It's open. All right, good deal. All right, here it comes. There it goes. Come on. Come on, computer. It pertains to school shootings. Right. Do you think that... Right. She already knows what the, the, c- c- the question is. Of uh, course me, she did. Let me she wrote it. This, this. Yeah, it's a, like a little town hall. Or, you know, yeah, there's a bunch town of... hall with recorded questions. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. She's a teacher. She's worried about crazy kids coming to shoot her in the classroom. It that, pertains like, to yeah, school shootings. Right. right. Do you think right. that reinstating the uh, ban on assault weapons and banning high-capacity magazines would do any good? Yes, um, I do. I do. Ooh, good. You know, my... Uh... Are you clapping over there? Are you clapping? I am. I'm all for it. Uh, I'm all for it. First That's of it. all, I think as a teacher... This, is with a, this was a test, Charlie McGrath. Yeah, I, I'm, I can maintain there. my cool. Let's roll. All right. Or really any parent, what's been happening with these school shootings should cause everybody to just think hard. We make hard choices and we balance competing values all the time. And I was disappointed that the Congress did not pass universal background checks uh, after the horrors of the uh, shootings at uh, Sandy Hook. And now we've had more. Uh, in the more. time since. Uh, and I don't think any parent, any person should have to fear about their child going to school or going to college because someone, for whatever reason, psychological, emotional, political, ideological, whatever it means, could possibly enter that school property uh, with an automatic weapon and murder innocent children students, teachers. I'm well aware that this is a hot political subject. And again, I will speak out no matter what role I find myself in. But I believe that we need a more thoughtful conversation. We cannot let a minority of people, and it's that's what it is. It is a minority of people. You, Charlie McGrath, uh, you. Hold yep. a viewpoint that terrorizes the majority of people. And you can you cannot have a viewpoint any longer that terrorizes people. So <laughs> um, she goes on and it talks more about these automatic weapons that are uh, yeah. legal. And and I don't think anybody that's had a what is it a class D license? I forget what the right. name it is, but you have to have a special license to have an automatic weapon. Right. They, I they can't. And I'm assuming. Into- I'm assuming. I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt and assume that she meant semi-automatic. Uh, you know, so-called assault rifles with a pistol grip. And a magazine that can hold over ten rounds, uh, you know. And yeah, that, yeah. Okay. That's what she's talking about. Fine. That's what we'll she's give her a about. pass on that. But yeah. uh, so she doesn't know what she's talking about. She, I think, knows. I, I don't give her the same uh, credit, or I, I give her more credit, and I don't believe that this is a faux pas. I, I think she knows the difference between uh, an automatic weapon and a semi-automatic weapon. If anybody's been out there and you know ranting on gun control for. 30 years plus. It's, well, that uh, makes no sense because none of these shootings none. have ha- involved an automatic weapon. None of them. None no, of them. No. When's the last time? As a matter of fact, I, I, I can't remember the, of the last time that I've seen a story about automatic, unless it was gang related and it was our attorney general facilitating it. And, and none of the weapons that were on the assault weapons ban list initially uh, were used. Uh, none of those have been used in any to my knowledge, any of these school shootings, right. we're having more and more of them. I mean, uh, let's not gloss over the fact that every four days this year, in a, it, on average, we've had a school shooting. But we've also whoa, whoa, had whoa, mass- whoa, whoa, what? Every four days? Yep, every four days, school shooting. I have a hard time buying that statistic, Doug yeah. Owen, my friend. Check it out. You should. You should not trust me. You should look up your own statistics. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty disturbing. There's been a lot of school shootings. But but a lot of these are also 
uh, gang related. They're not all just, you know, psychopathic kids that are on, uh, you know, psychotropic drugs wanting to shoot up their, you know, classmates because they've been bullied. Uh, a lot of these are gang related shootings and, uh, you know, other, other, uh, you know, people coming to kill, uh, you know, certain targets, including teachers in a few of the cases. So I was just looking at that. I mean, it, it's one of the statistics that, uh, those that want to take away your right to own a firearm or they yeah. want a, a brain scan before you get it or, you know, do you, that, that's the, that's the, that's the thing. <laughs> that's where they're you know, going and, with this. You know, you got to go to the, your, get your Obamacare health kit before, you know, they want to know if you have herpes before they give you, you know, a target pistol. Well, you, you, you heard her mention, you heard her mention, you know, mental illness and, and that, those are key words to me that, that means, uh, it's a control mechanism. And, you know what? I don't know anybody. Honestly, Doug Owen, I'm 44 years old, so to be 45. And, and, you know, I have a slew of people in my sphere. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't, I, I honest, to be honest with you, if I know them well, that everybody has it been partaked in some kind of a crisis in their life uh, that could eventually, I believe if the government had their way, you know, this would be record on, on record somewhere. And hey, Joel, I see that you have a uh, in 1995, you were prescribed this for whatever depression, <laughs> right? And and you know, next thing you know, you, you uh, are on some kind of uh, extra sensitive watch list. I mean, we, we, we talked about the 1968 Gun Control Act and how that right. could be used, and so there's already these, uh, I think, um, legal uh, cases that they could use to to justify this. The implementation's very hard, and the political backlash. I think it's one of the few things that has, has slowed that down. But, uh, you know, having the legal justification, we, we're already seeing gun confiscation happening in New York State, happening in California, selectively going back and, uh, you know, going through all of the records that are uh, illegal for the ATF and federal agencies to actually hold. Uh, law be damned. They're still doing it. And um, God, I, and it, just, I, I just have a hard time believing that stat. I'm reading it. I looked it up. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm on I'm an allgov.com and U.S. has an average uh, one school shooting every 4.4 days. Um, and I, Let's I guess I say a, five. Is that more believable? That's once yeah. a week. If you, there's well, that's, only that's, five school days. How, how many is that in, in a year? I mean, it's pushing 40. Or well, we, we're not even done with the year. Shootings at schools in the United States have become a com- so common this year that they're uh, averaging one just every four days nationwide. Hmm. As of June 10th, the date of most re- June 10th, ma- most sh- recent shooting at Reynolds High School in Oregon, there were 37 recorded gunfire incidents at schools in the U.S. According to Every Town for Gun Safety, that must be a website, a pro-gun uh, control group. Yeah, that this is. I, I don't believe this. I got to dig into this. I, sure. I think this is. Uh, I mean, I, you know. It, I, I mean, you might find something where one of those shootings was deputy dip. S that uh, you know ended up uh, shooting himself in the leg while he was in the parking lot. You know, yeah. <laughs> there's there's right. always going to be that it, it, those kind of uh, incidents that happen. You know, Bubba, you know, shot you know his buddy in in the leg on accident, or you know, kids shooting one another. Um, that's well, this. I mean, this, you know, you think that that's you know a crazy you know wild statistic, but it just doesn't seem that unreasonable. I mean, we have three hundred million plus people in this country. Right. Genius. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. We have, and we have 300 million guns in this country. In fact, and we have 100 and some million. I think we have owners. where I live in Round Rock, Texas. I think we have close to 40,000 students, right, uh, in in school. So you just think about some of the statistics. I mean, you know, you live in an apartment complex. You know, the chances for somebody to be raped there probably pretty high. You know, uh, you know, at least once a year. Does that make it an unsafe place? Not necessarily. You know, but there's just a lot of uh, these kind of things that do happen. But when you have a population that's that large, when you really right. look at the threat, that, and that's what's skewed about it, the threat of you being shot by a student if you're a teacher you know, is pretty it's slim. Yeah. Even well, if you well, have well, an active shooter on your campus, the chances for him to shoot you or her, maybe in some instances, are, are pretty minimal. And so, I mean, I think that... Uh, just like most things, it's so politicized and it's used to create fear or hype and uh, used to, uh, you know, take more and more uh, 
leads well, it, into to your personal privacy. And at the end of the day, Owen, I mean, even at this stat, when I dig into it, and I think I think it's going to be, I think there's going to be a lot of things that they that encompass into this that are ridiculous. But you're you're a hundred and ten percent correct. We have three hundred and twelve million, roughly, people in this country, and we have an armed populace. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Uh, over a hundred and fifty million people are gun owners. And with that stat, even if this stat's true, the number of people who die every year in mass shootings uh, doesn't equate to bee sting deaths. So, uh, you know, I I have a hard time believing this. I need to see some of this. uh, It's just horrifying. It's so scary because we're so interconnected. If you go back, you know, to the 70s, even 80s, there were bombings. You know, there were pipe bombs all over Texas. I remember pipe bomb awareness. And there were kids all over the place that were, you know, uh, uh, using pipe bombs, blowing things up. In the climate of fear that we live in today in 2014, that would seem like absolute anarchy. But we didn't have, you know, everybody didn't have a device that was tapped into this, uh, you know, huge matrix uh, where everyone is now a citizen journalist and everyone can leak uh, information and videos onto the Internet and uh, we can all see it uh, globally. Uh, I was looking at this uh, video of a police officer basically assassinating oh my god i have that posted too yeah yeah Yeah, but 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 you look at the the video and you see the the horror of it but you know police officers assassinating uh people that they wanted to get rid of people that are overly violent towards other cops this guy uh beating up a cop just uh obviously mentally disturbed you read into the article and and i did I, i read i read the article then i went deeper into it to read the decision that freed this cop and cleared this cop and, sure. and then the, the logic behind it. And it, it was unbelievable. Hey, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off, but <laughs> no, I, no. I'm reading this and I'm like, I'm reading this. I'm like, this can't happen. They can't be saying because the opportunity for him to, to slip his cuffs or slide them underneath his he butt. He was known to be able to reverse his cuffs and turn them around and put them in front of himself. And yeah, the, 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 the whole idea that if you were in the same situation, right, if you shot somebody, I but let me put it to you this way. I would shoot somebody personally for a whole lot less. If that guy was coming at me and trying to, you know, bashing his head against the wall and freaking out and trying to choke me and it, you know, busted my buddy in the mouth, I would shoot him for a lot less. So I think that we're holding, we, but we hold police officers, public Are servants. Are you kidding me? Heck yeah. If this guy What's busted into deal? your house, okay, this guy busted into your house. Yeah, <laughs> you I'd take him out. If he busted into my house, what if he was on the hands? street and he was coming <laughs> after you and you thought that he was a bodybuilder? Okay. In handcuffs? Was, uh, well, people could choke you in handcuffs. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I, I tell I, you, I'm just being honest, okay? Not to condone or to ignore what happened. I was only making the point. That we only see this stuff and get it put on Facebook, and right. you know we all are no, able no, to no, have no, a no. global I, conversation. I know about what you're this. saying. Look, right. and I know what you're saying, and it's sensationalized. And independent media is going to grab and run with it. Right. But if you look, not just I, that. I mean, it, it people. This is what this is media. This is shocking media. Watching a cop assassinate somebody and right. then go free, regardless of whether you know it doesn't matter. Okay. This, did, are you? Uh, wait a minute. I, I need to be. I need to make sure I'm on the right page here. Because I, I, did I misunderstand that you are you are in support of the decision that there's no re- ramifications for the outright assassination of a handcuffed prisoner who was on his back, or do you support that, or are you like thinking as I do, which was this was truly an assassination, complete misuse of force. And I, I could give a crap what they thought he could possibly potentially do. He was handcuffed on the ground on his back. And uh, he caught a nine millimeter round in his neck that blew through his chest and bled out there on camera in about, uh, oh, I don't know, about a good two minutes. He the was only dead. thing I could say, I mean, obviously, I don't condone the police officer assassinating this guy. But the guy got up and he was like trying to run away from this guy. This guy was already getting up and was yeah. overpowering two of the cops. Was it the wrong decision? Absolutely. Is it horrifying and shocking? Yeah, truly is, truly is, and I think it's great that they, the person that had this leaked this onto the internet so that we can all be judges of the of, of these actions and you know uh, become more aware of how ridiculously uh, uh, backwards the state is. I mean, you know that this you would go to jail for a whole lot less if, than than this guy if you did, if you shot somebody in the back handcuffed. 
Yeah. <laughs> you would they not, used to do that. They, never... they used to do that in, in Nazi Germany. You know, that's the shit they're doing over uh, these uh, crazy ISIS people chopping off the heads, shooting people when they're on their hands and knees uh, because they're Shiites instead of Sunni. I mean, th- that video, you know, and the story behind it, that he right. was a bodybuilder. He's five foot eight, 200 pounds. There's two, there's a guard there and a cop and they, and he's on his back. He threw himself onto his back, handcuffed hand. I mean, you could pistol. I'm not saying that they shouldn't have used force against the guy. Yeah. They pistol could, whip him. They, shoot well, him where, in the knee. Where the hell's the taser? You know, the less lethal force. Oh, no, you know? because earlier in the day he was tased four times with minimal effect. That was, that was justification for murdering him. Uh, yeah. you know, the, the, the it's like the the vagrant who they killed was that that was an Albuquerque who was standing there, you know, surrounded by these paramilitary forces with uh, AR-15s pointing at him. And, and they're saying he's going for a pocket knife, you know, and he's 30, 40 feet away. So they just waste yeah, his the, ass. The guy can't, he, he, he looks mentally disturbed and he wasn't in the greatest shape. He can only throw that thing so far. I mean, you just wait for him there. He's going to, he has these to guys some point. trigger happy. They went uh, in that case. They went there to assassinate him, and in this case, I think that they just had their fill. They had their fill. They were tired of this guy. He was obviously mentally challenged. Something was wrong inside of his brain. I mean, he'd right. been fighting the cops all day long, and I guess he right. didn't. Get, he didn't get enough. So I don't really feel that bad on a moral level for this guy. I mean, obviously, I do. <laughs> I, I do. I mean, you know what? He uh, he might have been on a week. I mean, he's a body, but he might have been on a week long bender of some kind of uh, wacky steroid. Mm-hmm. And, and there's no. I mean, he was obviously uh, uh, displaying some pretty incredible strength, even uh, handcuffed. But there's nothing that I saw or read, even the earlier in the day. You know, God dang it, put him in a cage. Put him in a damn cage. You have two. Uh, <laughs> they had 500 pounds of guards on him. Right. With tasers, with night, you know, they could have beat the guy to a pulp until he was unconscious. And, and that would have been bad. But at least the guy was not. Beat well, they dead. already tasered him. I mean, why Why does this guy not have a, you know, why is he not in solitary confinement? Why yeah. Why haven't you put a bag on his head or something? I don't I don't know. I mean, not that I can. Yeah, why, that, yeah. but what, why? That's a great question. Why? <laughs> why? Why is he dead? Uh, you know, that's that's a question. Why are you I guys have. out there with your weapons uh, on? You know, fighting this guy in a courtyard. There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of things that don't make sense. But, but really, I mean, my point was just that you know, we're 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 seeing this all now for the first time. You're seeing what happens. The horrors, the daily horrors that happen inside prisons. You know, men being raped. I mean, there's some really, really, really horrible things that happen. I mean, if you look at this humanitarian crisis, and that's what it's becoming with all these children on the border and looking at everybody debating on what's the solution. There's no good solution. There's nothing that's going to be uh, equitable or cheap about any of it. Uh, There's nothing that is, uh, you know, letting other people just pick up these kids and take them wherever or being exploited. And, and so you, everybody's looking for this political solution to the crisis and, and what they have to do. And it just becomes this, you know, huge, I say it often. I mean, it's true. It's a political football. That's, that should be the name of the show, political footballs, because that's what we talk about. And that's what that whole situation has become. And you know, what do you do? I mean, don't ask Doug Owen. I, I think that you, we can't just start, creating huge orphanages for all of these children. But right. if you continue to give them uh safe haven, uh people in Ecuador, Guatemala, you know, the third world or you know, South It's America. forcing it's forcing this issue is what it's doing. And and it you know what I, I actually there's the media I think some of the media the I think right it's media, a joke though that we, we claim that we have true security and as much security as we have in this country. We just have, you know, people and and, and I think there's something much more shady about this. I was talking with a friend of mine who is Hispanic. We live right, you know, 300 miles from the border. And mm-hmm. um, it costs you about $2,000 to get across the border. Okay, bare right. minimum, just to get across the border. That doesn't even get you into Texas. That doesn't get you past the checkpoint. There's a 15-mile checkpoint you have to go through. And it's, you know, it, it costs a lot of money. I mean, more than I ever thought it would to actually get into the United States. So you have all these children. I mean, the people down there would have to, you know, save... Ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars. I mean, a lot right. of money that they just, honestly, I don't think have. So, either something else is happening. Other people are ship, shipping these children in. Um, there, there's somebody else bankrolling this. There's a state sponsor. 
uh, which I, I think there has to be a state or corporate sponsor that is bankrolling this to get these children here. For, What's I mean, the purpose of that? I don't know. I don't know, but the, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Well, I, I think a lot of them, a lot of them are being funded from family members who are already here and they're working. You know, so they're they're sending many money back to Guatemala. But I think in a lot of cases, well, you said it. You know, they're saving for years and years so they can send you know twelve year old Johnny uh, across uh, across Mexico and then uh, into the U.S. And I think there is a very very clear signal that this administration has put out there to the Middle East. I mean, excuse me, to uh, uh, Central America that it's time to come here because you're not going to be you're not going to be uh, uh yeah, Joe Biden can't get enough of it. I mean, they're just we, we need wide open borders, please, wide open. It seems like it's almost an, a, a a symbol to a lot of people of of what America is and that if we closed our borders, if we became xenophobic, if we and we have before. Uh, right. You know, 1929 is one example where the US said, "Hey, we've got we have enough immigrants right now." Um, I don't think that ever in the history of this country anybody's been thrilled about immigrants and immigration. Sure, and, and they yeah. hated they hated the you know. There's always been hatred to, towards the Irish, for example. Yeah, they, uh, you know, in, were... in the turn of the century when they were you know coming over, they were the labor force that would do things for nothing, and uh, you know we. So yeah, there's always been this, uh, I guess, nationalistic uh, for when it comes to to uh, immigrants. Right, the the ability that we we are the place that you can come. America is the place that you can come to start a new life and to have an opportunity to become rich and live yeah. in the capitalist society that is you know the big one. But this situation, this situation is you said it early on. It is an absolute crisis that's going on in your region of this country. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh and I think it's, you know, it's done purposefully. I don't know if it's Corporate back sponsors here or there, although corporates uh, corporations here absolutely benefit uh, from this uh, cheap labor source that's coming in. Uh, but uh, it's certainly going to be, you know, look at the stages that's being set, Doug Owen, for 2014 and 2016. All these issues, all these distractions, because uh, it sure as hell makes a nice uh, talking point for the left and the right uh, as the rest of the world crumbles around us. So certainly uh, I, I see that uh, situation on the border being uh, a crisis in this country, but uh, I look around the world and I see the entire planet in crisis. You know, from from Iraq to uh, Ukraine, which is out of our news, uh, but certainly uh, not out of the danger of uh, bringing Eastern Europe into war. And if that sounds like a sensational statement, well, it is because it absolutely could happen. Have you been uh, following the shut off of the gas and the blowing up of pipelines and that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, it's very convenient. They decide to shut off the gas, and the next day, the gas pipeline, one of the biggest, happens to blow up. Coincidence, yeah. a coincidence. Cha ching. Well, and it's and it's uh it's in the middle of Ukraine, far far away from any of the fighting going on in eastern Ukraine. It's in an area that's absolutely controlled by Kiev. So, uh, when that was uh, blown up, first they first they blamed it on low pressure in the pipe, uh, but the interior minister of in uh, Kiev within an hour blamed it on russia i find it interesting because the uh the yeah, why uh, would they do that we uh, they, i mean russia would I, I could see russia doing it if they were trying to do uh you know a, a reichstag moment a, a, a false flag in order to uh invade further in ukraine i mean there's a there's an argument and a logic behind that okay that, yeah, that would make, I, I like that i like that logic yeah but it's bullcrap <laughs> it's bullcrap because the what the right sector uh, this Nazi group, and it is, guys, it's a Nazi group. It isn't neo. It's the real deal. You know, they they want to return to this nationalistic Nazi uh, Ukraine and and uh, for, enforce their will. One of the things they said early on, back in March, is they will um, uh, sabotage uh, Russia Russian infrastructure uh, in these these pipelines that run through and blow them up. So it's really ironic in a in a chunk of Ukraine that is completely controlled by Kiev. Uh, the right sector has massive influence in that government, and all of a sudden, the biggest pipeline uh, is blown up within 24 hours of Russia saying, you owe us $4 billion, we're cutting you off until we get paid. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yes, there can be an argument, as the uh, minister or the interior minister of Ukraine uh, tried to lay out that uh, there would be a reason why Russia could do it, and you could paint that picture, but common sense tells me, uh, nope, this is... Uh, this is more of uh, the carnage that was wreaked by a five billion dollar investment to destabilize uh, Ukraine. And Doug, well, well, the five billion dollars was for Chevron, and that's why they're coming in to frack the place. So that kind of lends a little credence to 
to what you're, you know, postulating yeah. over there. I do think that this also puts a lot of pressure on Europe. Think about this. You know, they need more money. They've been asking for more NATO cash. You need more security. And then one of the things that's happened is that, you know, the green agenda, the green economy has definitely stalled because of cheap gas prices. Uh, this this pushes them and, of course, gives more reason for Europe to not only unify, but to continue to uh, to to militarize with the, the, the U.S., Poland, Estonia, uh, other neighboring states, Eastern Europe. It, it also puts a lot of pressure on Germany, which uh, I think has been an ally, not to mention France. France right. has been uh, kind of an X factor. They're still doing business selling weaponry to the Russians, which I guess isn't really that shocking considering that when we invaded Iraq in 2003, uh, they did not support uh, the U.S. And then all of us, you know, patriotic Americans, and I, I'm not including myself. I did not do this, but people poured out perfectly good wine. Perfectly good wine, French wine, uh, to protest that. I'm sure you remember that. That was a big. Deal. I remember. I remember. You're not going to help life. America free uh, I remember, these people. Yeah, I'm and, and people wine. went. People, people went and order French fries. They would order Freedom fries. Right. Remember that? That's when Freedom <laughs> fries came out. So uh, they they reinvented themselves, and so yeah. uh, actually, funny enough, uh, Coca Cola. Uh, was being protested in Russia, and they did the exact same thing. And you know, some of the people on blacklistednews.com rightly noted, well, I, I, they sold a lot of Coca Cola in Russia that day. But this is to protest what's happening in Ukraine and U.S. involvement, and, and kind of the whole same sentiment, you know, right. fu. And and it's kind of funny because it, they're very accurate in looking at Coca Cola, a multinational corporation that has. Uh, contributed to the enslavement of human beings and, uh, you know, the, I mean, just uh, horrors, horrors in, you know, their caramel colored wait minute, wait sugar syrup say, has, has, did you say whores or whore? The, a like, lot of both. A lot oh, of both. I didn't know, I didn't know Coke was into pimping out. Now I know. Yeah. Well, I mean, turn on your TV. You're getting pimped out by Coca Cola. There's no doubt about it. I remember when it was cool back in the 80s to wear Coca Cola paraphernalia. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent here, but, the uh, the point is is that uh, the French are also uh, doing a little backhanded deal. Let me see. I have a link here to with uh, Russia, and so they're not they're not too thrilled. Um, the, uh, it, it, are, are you playing a video clip or audio clip? No, I was just. Okay. Looking, I'm sorry. Well, one of, one of the things going on in Ukraine as well, uh, and and I'm sure we glanced over this in in other Doomcast. But, you know, the, the influence, you know, the, this uh, we did it for these uh, special interests. You know, now we have Joe Biden's son uh, uh, working for uh, a company that has massive influence and in infrastructure bankers. in Ukraine. Yeah, they're yeah. bankers. He's a banker. He's an investment fund manager. Well, um, I, I the, the the thing that was funny and I don't have his name in front of me. And maybe maybe when I talk about this story, you'll remember his name. The actual his actual boss, he's the fourth richest person, third richest person uh, inside of Ukraine. Joe Biden's son now works for him. But, you know, he, he got his wealth not through I mean, he through acquisition. But when you talk about violent hostile takeover, that he's the master of it. I'm talking about, you know, the Ukraine, Russia, uh, after the fall of the Soviet Union became the ultimate security state. Every, but it was privatized. Everybody that was Spetsnaz or any other. Uh, a type of military that couldn't get paid because the government was defunct started going out and being private protectors and the oligarchs needed that they were taken back over they needed this kind of security well th this guy and I, and I and I'll find his name before the end of the program here well it's under Biden <clears throat> and he works he's the son of vice president Joe Biden and yeah. he works for this private gas producer the company announced now I guess he's probably working with some other people now yeah and uh anyway it was kind of it was a big deal because it was just ammunition for people like Charlie and my, myself to uh, you know, sh exploit the opportunity to show cronyism 101. This is nepotism. Right. This is this is true nepotism. You know, your son is the uh, you're you're advocating for the takeover, the hostile takeover uh, with military weaponry of right. Ukraine with and... these with these private Blackwaters, these Russian and Ukraine Blackwaters. Uh, Eeyore, I H O R Eeyore. Uh, Kolomiski is his name, and he's uh, he's living, uh, in, I believe, in Sweden now. But uh, very, very powerful oligarch, third richest man in Ukraine. And uh, when, 
when he when we talk about violent hostile takeover, he does it with force, with the barrel of a gun, and that's how he's a- attained his wealth. And now, you know, we have a, a an American vice president's son who is uh, holding hands with this character. And so, th- I mean, this is why you know the crap they give you about freedom and choice and joining the EU and becoming part of NATO and blah blah. That you know, it's all crap. It's all crap. It's influence. It's power. It's energy. Uh, it's it's trying to flex uh, the Western muscle against the Eastern muscle, and you know the, the, it can't go any farther. You're back to I mean you have you have Russia backed up to a point where they either stand their ground or they just see, see this you know massive overrun uh, by NATO, and and I just don't think that this situation is going to die down or fizzle out like we've seen so many protests in the past because uh, I I do believe Russia is injecting quote air quote volunteers to go over there and do training and do fights i mean you know crap they're they're shooting down you know four massive engine military uh transport planes uh with high technology uh, uh equipment so I, I think this is a proxy war that is going to be very much uh heating up in the days and months to come doug Owen, your thoughts oh, well i've got a lot of them i've got a ton of them okay number one we we should talk about the military industrial complex. They, of course, are the ones that are going to be making more and more money regardless uh, of what's happening. Uh, there are companies like Lockheed, Raytheon, and other weapons manufacturers, Beechcraft, that are, are raking in big profits. This came from yep. AllGov. So be suspect. They're the same ones that brought you the uh, the other statistics. Four days. Four uh, or every four days, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, U.S. companies are reaping big benefits from the Iraqi government battle with ISIS militias. Three sales, including uh, some big-ticket items, uh, announced last month will put nearly $1 billion in the pockets of American defense uh, contractors. If Congress approves the sales, Beechcraft, they will be getting, uh, let's see, $790 million, almost a billion for the AT-6C Texan II. Texan. Oh, that's a cool plane. Have you seen that one? Yeah, it's pretty cool. If you want it, it's to kill a, it's people. a yeah, that's a it's a kill people plane. It's a close support combat plane, and it's a prop job. It yeah. looks like a World War II fighter, kind of. It's actually a, a, um yeah. I mean, it's 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 a prop plane. It's a it's a light uh, attack and intelligence uh, yeah uh, reconnaissance throw, plane. Throw so. a couple of hellfires on it, fly low and slow. Uh, that's an interesting story behind that because Beechcraft uh, uh, lost the contract. To a Brazilian company, Ooh. and they fought. They, they fought in year in court for a few years uh, before they could finally get that. And I don't know why I followed that story, but I did. But uh, uh, interesting that we kind of came together there, a little synchronicity. Yeah, that's because you're number three, and I'm number four. I'm telling you, they got anyway. Uh, AM General selling Humvees. Raytheon has a ninety billion dollar contract for the uh, raid system. But it brings me to our forty billion dollar missile defense system. Now, this is a story that. I mean, it's it's pretty epic. It's it's throwing money uh, at a problem or a situation using fear to enrich uh, oneself. We spent forty billion dollars on this. Testing began in nineteen ninety nine, and it's the missile defense system. It protects us from North Korea. Remember this? I mean, this has become a recurring uh, update for the mainstream media. How's the GMD? It's a, it's basically the ground-based mid-course defense system and uh it's crap the missile defense agency said that uh, they out of 16 tests they conducted uh eight of them uh failed so it has about a 50 50 which i guess is you could argue is better than no chance it's better than zero chance and that's about (laughs) the only argument you'll get out of this but um you know, you see this. It doesn't work. $40 billion, and I just saw this other one. Office of Naval Research wants U- U.S. Marine ground vehicles to carry lasers and shoot down drones uh, by uh, 2020. So that sounds far-fetched, and it reminds me of G.I. Joe, something that Cobra Commander would be cruising around <laughs> with. Pew, pew, pew. Uh, uh, but uh, so we're kind of here. We're, we're already uh, yeah. at, at that point uh, where this is, uh, you know, going crazy. And it brings me to my last one. My last yeah. one here to finish off the military industrial complex for the moment. They're going to be, you know, uh, enrich themselves. And that is the new, uh, drone that shoots, uh, gas, uh, pepper spray paintballs, uh, at crowds. Now, this is going to be popular with police departments. So basically, Absolutely. this thing's got, it's got a launcher, but sick and disgusting, uh, is the fact that the, uh, people that are looking to buy this, 
are the companies that own mines in South Africa. Remember those South African mine workers, I don't know, maybe eight, nine months ago that were just being mowed down by police that were uh, rioting and uh, running? Yeah, did you see that video or remember yes, that story? Yes, I do. This is the same company, the same companies, uh, one of them uh, being uh, – well, they they don't name them, but uh, right. Kaiser, who is uh, one of the company's reps for Defense Web, um, says that uh, uh, they'll they'll sell it for forty six thousand dollars. But that is the key motivator. It's got a microphone. It's got cameras. It it, it will shoot tear gas at at miners. And you just think about that. I mean, developing a technology that you know will be used and actually created to uh, suppress people that. Uh, you know, are enslaved basically right. to right. If you're if you're if you're on the corner and you're wearing your uh you're wearing your anarchy red and black outfit, who maybe your you Jimcast know, dot com shirt? Yeah, I'm wearing mine right now, and you know, uh, the, just fly the drone over, pepper spray the crap out of somebody and or of a crowd, and do it from you know 17 miles away in police headquarters. And the ones that are still there, well, we can just hand them like we did. Uh, like we were talking about in that video earlier, come and put them in handcuffs and put one in their head. You know, it worked for Nazi Germany, right? It worked. Uh, it's worked. The time of, it's yeah, it's working right now in in the Middle East. It's just called barbarism. And, barbarism. Uh, it is. Barbarism. I, I'm reading that story. I I, I ran and caught that uh, that you're talking about. With I, I can't believe. I mean, this ISIS situation. First, they've known about it for a long time, but the the crisis level uh, is what just a few days old and already. The cha ching, they're cashing in billions and billions. You're going to make billions and billions of dollars off this. Not unlike, you know, in Afghanistan, they, they decided it wasn't worth it to bring what? Seven, eight billion dollars worth of equipment. So they just, you know, buried it in the sand well, or yeah, gave it away. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the deal. Uh, and you've probably got a little bit of a unique perspective because you were actually there and uh, some of the, the ailments that you have currently in the system going through the VA system. Uh, yourself and uh, you know dealing with this because of the the blood and treasure uh, right. that that is a rock. I think that it's sour grapes. And twenty four years in my, from my perspective, twenty four years in the making. Please continue. Yeah. Well, and, and why are people still asking Dick Cheney what to do? I I don't know, but um, what what has happened is that we've had contractors that have trained ISIS, U.S. contractors out of Jordan, along with Jordanian officials. Uh, Aaron Klein actually got a, a scoop on this for WorldNet Daily, and uh, it's been vetted. Um, and it's it's not surprising, even if it's, it's not completely accurate, and I can't really give verification. I'm going to go with it, but it doesn't yeah. surprise me because that's what Jordan is. It's a big training base. That you know, the the CIA that is their mo training terrorists. That's what they are doing in in yeah. Syria. That's what they are doing in Jordan. Training these guys to overthrow governments. And uh, how do you do that? You do it with improvision because they don't have lots of money, and they they now have stinger weapons. And you you got to right. wonder if those came from, uh, of course, uh, Benghazi or <laughs> where they got those. Not to to blow any uh you know to to blow it off, but. I mean, seriously, that's what it was all about, a weapons depot that was looted. And we just see more and more of these anti-aircraft weapons, uh, you know, winding up in the strangest places like Ukraine, Syria, yeah. uh, Stinger missiles. Anyway, um, so knocking down, knocking down massive air, uh, aircraft. Yeah, yeah and, and you've got them. And of course, you've got Saudi Arabia that is uh, supporting a lot of these militias. They are also doing a lot of covert and overt funding for uh, other private mercenaries and uh, radicals and uh, right. ideologues well, in, in Syria. And now you have Iran. This is what's got this is what's getting all the neocons going and, and so upset is that we're now dealing with. Uh, known CIA operator, uh, what's his name? Uh, Massawi, the, uh, the, yes. the Iranian president, uh, the guy, whoever the guy is that followed. Uh, uh, Wait, you're not talking about Ahmadinejad. Ahmadinejad's out. He's yeah. the new guy, and he was part of the Iranian uh, hostage crisis, and uh, he's been very friendly with the U.S. And that's why you don't hear a lot uh, other than maybe you know Israel banging the drum, but you don't hear a lot of talk, or at least not as much. Uh, about Iran, and that's because I think they have some friendlies. But oh, now... they're in they're in Venice. I mean, they're they're in a conference right now in in Venice, isn't it? Venice mm -hmm. uh, uh, over nu um, nuclear uh, proliferation uh, uh, inside of Iran, and the 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 
you know the media's take over the last six months prior to this has been the the uh, establishing a better relationship uh, with Iran. So very yeah, convenient uh, now that they want them to fight ISIS and to intervene. And uh, I, I think... what is your take on that, though? I mean, I, you know, I, I see this as the, I don't know if this is conspiratorial or just common sense. I I can see this being used by Israel by the United States uh, as an opportunity to weaken Iran to draw them in to a conflict with their you know with the, the same people that they lost what two million men in uh to, from 2000 to, or from uh 1980 to 1988 this eight year war with Iraq uh this the Shiite Sunni uh, battle that's going to continue and rage regardless of uh of what countries uh pretending to be the uh, security as in the case of the United States in this uh, instance but I could absolutely see a war game played out that says you know what we'll do this is what we're going to do we're going to take this al nasra front right these bunch of al qaeda people that we invented and we're going to throw them into syria and you know this this whole syrian thing backfired because guess what assad won he won the, he's staying he isn't going anywhere and that was made very very apparent during the almost the hair's breadth we came from a bombing just we doing a pulling a libya on him mm-hmm. so yeah. al nasra front that's tr- al qaeda all the way trained by us funded by us armed by us they just turned around. They turned around and rolled into Iraq. Uh, and I could see this get war game where they said, well, we'll send them here. We'll draw Iran in and uh, weaken Iran because they'll have to expend so much time or so much resources in fighting this this ISIS or whatever, you know, whatever boogeyman they're putting before. Them. But yeah. it's a very it's a very real scenario that could play out where, you know, we're stepping away. We clear out the embassy and we have just carnage over there. And guess what? We're almost at the point where we're such an energy producer that it's probably uh, the, the Middle East in 20 years will be a, a whole lot more irrelevant uh, than it is right now. Well, you know, I think that there's this uh, definite push to, to get away from Israel and, and work more with Iran. At least there's a lot of people in the current administration that have, have, have moved that way because uh, I think of just the, the economic benefits of that. And, you know, that that's always been the wedge. That's been the divide. And one of the things that stopped those kind of conversations from happening, what does this do? This brings Iran into the conversation. Of course, they they, you know, are are one of the countries that borders and has to deal with the situation on their own borders. So you're right. This does draw them into uh, maybe uh, potentially a trap or another you know, redux of the Iraq Iran war. Um, <laughs> I like redux. I like that. Yeah. You know, that, that might be the, uh, you know, catalyst, but you yeah. know, I was, I was looking at the New York times and you know, I like to read the times, Charlie McGrath. I know you do. You're a times follower. I'm a I'm times not guy. Lover. <laughs> and uh, I've got the, I've got the, the, the edition here at the house and, uh, they have this big uh, article. Lack of major wars may be hurting economic growth, and this is <laughs> yeah. this is this is a big problem, Charlie McGrath. I mean, there's only so much money that Beechcraft and uh, Lockheed Martin and the rest of Raytheon, the Raytheon, yeah, and the bankers. I mean, they need money. I mean, here's a big story. You know, besides that, I mean, yeah, the economic growth aspect, and there's all of these calls for war, and uh, there's I'm sure it's already being financialized, and everybody's making their bets every time Dick Cheney opens his mouth, somebody's you know, going long on Lockheed or uh, who yeah, did he, who or did oil. he work with? Yeah, oil. Who did he work with? He was KBR uh, and uh, and Halliburton. Yeah, Mr. Halliburton. So there, yeah. you know, there's there's a lot of money to be made or lost in in these wars, and you have to reposition quickly when you well, you know. Well, listen to me. I I, I truly believe. I tr- you know, there's a reason why you're you're hearing about Stinger missiles. You're seeing in Ukraine, you know, these things coming down and being used. I, I, I truly believe, Doug, and, and you give me your thought take on this. Um, we're being set up to be repatriatized, repatriated. Like, no, what's a uh, re, how would I say that? To turn the nation back into, you remember after 9 11, we're going to every- go, go away from globalization and we're going to go towards isolation. No, I think we, I think we're going to go towards more of, the security state, the, the military industrial complex, the security industrial complex. Mm. And I think we're going to see some kind of major, major attack on, on the West. Now, maybe not necessarily the United States, but in the West could be in the United States. And it'll be horrific in nature. And, and it will garner the kind of uh, patriotism that this system needs in order to keep expanding 
the security industrial complex. They need a nation that is all pissed off because of something that just happened. And what I was going to say is, you remember after 9-11, that there wasn't a car driving down the road that didn't have a plastic Chinese-made uh, American flag wagging around in it. So yeah, uh, I, I don't know if you can do that again. I don't think that uh, I think that at some point people have become numb to the, the horror and numb to the, the the constant attacks and numb to it. So I, I don't know if that's really the the angle that they want to take. But maybe I mean, and in, in, that's not to say that they haven't been engendering some, you know, these kind of things to happen at some point. I mean, yeah. when you just train when you train, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of terrorists in, right. in the aggregate and you every build- year. Sooner and and you later. let them invade, you let them roll through Iraq, and they they acquire all these high advanced missile systems, or you know uh, Stinger missiles and other uh, military. How well equipment. can you control that? I mean, how how long before that ends up you know uh, crossing the, the Texas Mexican border? You know, I, don't know. I, I mean, it, it and, and most people will think, of course, that it's government staged, but at some point, if you just continue this and you drop billions of dollars into war zones with the craziest fanatical radicals that you can uh, imagine you're going to create problems you're going yeah it's to called have... blowback it's called blowback and it's coming <laughs> and let's not forget baghdadi he's the leader he's the new uh, osama bin laden he's the new ahmadinejad he's the guy you're supposed the bozo to worry guy? about oh uh, mean uh, el bozo <laughs> or what is, what's his name uh, B- baghdadi is uh, the leader of isis but he and and I, I thought that you would certainly have something to say about the conditioning that happened to him between 2000, I believe 2004 and 2009. Let me guess, he was eating at the State Department with. Well, uh, he was Laden. in custody. He was in custody by the U.S. government. In, in that, oh, that he's period. got a chip in his head. He's got something. He's got a lot of money because they just raided a central bank a week ago. Oh, and yeah, Mansoul, uh, how do you even do that? I mean, that's almost uh, just. Not, <laughs> I I don't believe it. You know, there's two other things I want to hit before we get out of here. I think that yeah. we, must, we must talk about. One of them is Constellus Holdings. Have you heard about this company? No. This is the military-industrial complex, okay? Can- Triple Canopy, Constellus LTD, Strategic Social, Tidewater. How do you spell it? Spell it. It's Constellus, C-O-N-S-T-E-L-L-I-S. Okay. They just bought – this is a, a, a private holdings company, okay? They're Constellus Group Incorporated. And they now have Blackwater Academy Training Centers, International Development Su- uh, Solutions, Triple Canopy, Tidewater. They have it all. They are this – now it's this big corporate uh, gig that owns all of these other private companies. And guess who's there? You got U.S. Attorney General Ashcroft, somebody who continues to benefit from 9-11 over and over again. Over. Obviously, uh, uh, Red McCombs, <laughs> board of directors here. Uh, so you got an oil guy from Oklahoma who supports uh, uh, lots of uh, Longhorn uh, athletics here. And, uh, well, he's got just he's, – he's super rich. Billionaire. You got White House Chief of uh, Council Jack Quinn, of course, former a- Admiral Bobby Inman, Russ Robinson, and a bunch of other guys. Triple Canopy uh, co-founder Tom Cottis. He's there. The only one that they're missing is Eric Prince, and I think it's just because he has so much heat and attention on him that uh, you know he has to. They wanted to put him in the back burner. They couldn't put him on the board of directors for God's sakes. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, they they have uh, six thousand private mercs. These are the guys that are training uh, everyone, and uh, yeah. one of the few places that if you're a, a an Iraqi veteran or a veteran of foreign war, that you could probably pick up a private gig working for. Multinational corporations, governments, and international organizations. So, Coca-Cola, Nestle, you name it. But uh, yeah, you know, it, it's one of the. This is this is the group. This is the military-industrial complex. Nobody else is going to talk about that. You're not going to hear it anywhere else. Uh, yeah, and I, and I actually want you to send me the the link on it because I'm apparently spelling it wrong. I put triple canopies everywhere, but Constellus, uh, I'm Here, I'm, I'm not in the no one. Yeah, yeah it's it's. But but I mean really that is I mean this is the you know the these uh, sci-fi movies um that you watch that show you know corporate control of the planet and corporate police and corporate security and corporate uh, militaries uh that's where we're going Owen that's that's exactly where we're going and I I watched a really really good documentary on the Spetsnaz uh, uh, a few months ago, and what happened? You know, this this elite fighting force. What happened when the when the Soviet system fell apart? The oligarchs got them. You know, they they ended up 
owning you know these uh these uh military units and uh, establish their will that Feudalism, way and that, yeah. It, it, yeah and and it becomes the new rule of law and uh it, i know it's a system that i'm not looking forward to but we're certainly marching uh, ever closer to it but think about you know this constellus or or uh triple canopy or any of these uh these military industrial complex uh corporations Doug, I really believe a false flag of, of epic magnitude has to occur for the final push. The final push on everything. The final push on the total control of every person in this country through technology. The final push on a global financial governance that is going to have to unify the world after this next massive uh, event that occurs. I mean, it, it just seems it, everything's going on now is made for movie drama. So why wouldn't it play out that way? Well, uh, at, at some point it, it will if it benefits the uh the the, the other, man the man the powers the that man be. maybe I yeah. Mean, yeah i mean i'm not saying it couldn't happen I, actually everything points to it happening uh but i think that at some point you you use that you've used that whole line that whole logic and i've heard so many of these uh people in the know like general michael hayden and people like zigny brzezinski that talk about uh, the 2000s as the era of war, a new era, and, and we're going into these new periods, uh, deconstructionism, um, you know, a, a lot of these memes. I mean, far too many to get into now. But basically right. the, the idea is that we used war and imminent threat as a way to create, you know, a, a narrative and t to use it to instrument or to to implement uh, you know, a security state, but that only works for so long and you can only go outside of the constitutional boundaries for so long before people get tired of it. You no longer have the consent of the willing and, and you have to move into a new age. You have to change things. You have to get in front of them. And so it, you see that. I mean, things are in cycles uh, over and over again. And there's just so many of them from energy, yeah. scarcity, yeah, epic, you know, in the 70s, it was global cooling. Now it's global warming. Next month, who knows what it may end up being because they'll find something else that's more effective to to call it. Uh, yeah. It, well, it, I think global fear is is the ultimate, you know. I, I mean, that is uh, the ultimate controlling uh, mechanism that they're using. And I, I, I don't think that we need to see – I don't think they need another war on. They got it. They got the big one. War on everybody. That, I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, War so on I, I would everybody. think that a, a plague or uh, you know some other kind of, if it was going to be a manufactured event or just the response to a real event that that happens. I mean, right. you know, the the chance for a, a solar flare to wipe out you know the, the electronics. Oh, on this how fun would that be? How fun would that be? Going back to eighteen eighteen oh four. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Do you know Morse code? Because we can talk on the telegraph. Yeah. Do, yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah. We'll have to do smoke signals. Be... Hmm. Well, there's no there's no electric juice coming with the big uh, mass coronal ejection there, so we're gonna have to do it via smoke signal. But can you imagine, Doug Owen? Can you imagine the carnage, uh, the the absolute? Uh, and I don't know. You know, I I read a little bit on it and watched uh, some documentaries on it. But <laughs> I watched these... Evolution, if you or Revolution. I'm sorry. Revolu I watched that a few times, but. <laughs> That, I don't think that was a, a mass coronal ejection. It was some kind of secret government. Uh, it was a secret government plot to uh, yeah. eugenics, to get rid of all the weak and all the, the yeah. lame, and it was like a hunger game. Yeah, you think it's coming? Why not? Why not? Yeah. I mean, Holly, Hollywood uh, writes most Can a mass scripts. coronal ejection wipe out electricity on the planet, or is it going to have to be like a hemisphere at a time? It wouldn't really matter. I mean, you wipe out China and Europe, uh, you know, Asia and Europe with a, a mass coronal ejection. The whole planet's gonna, you know, it's gonna go into. I, I think that they uh, would be they would be doing a lot better in places like Russia or th the Eastern Bloc or even in China because of the, you know, the amount of rural, uh, yeah, you know, people that are living. Oh, I mean, you'd in, have in death. North Korea. Be... I mean, it, you know, ninety percent, ninety ninety five percent of the country's dark, so yeah, it it wouldn't change things. It would they wouldn't know suck. what happened. <laughs> they wouldn't even know. It was just Sunday. <laughs> uh, man, did you hear uh, about George day. Clooney? Okay, we 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 packed. Wait, he this. was in Ukraine. He was in Ukraine doing his little thing. What's he doing now? Uh, he's mulling a run for California governor. Oh my goodness! Yeah, Governor Clooney. Yeah, Governor Clooney. I mean, let's let's think about it. Okay, Ronald Reagan, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, there's probably some other people that were in Hollywood that became governors of California, but there's two right there. 
yeah. uh, that one of them that went on to be president of the United States. And I don't think right. that we're going to have President George Clooney, but I could see California voting in George Clooney. I mean, this is the the weird parallels that have always been there, but the, the power of Hollywood or Hollyweird, which is what it really is, and the, the Obama administration and uh, politics. Uh, so it, it's beyond it is beyond <laughs> comprehensible that the, people the, really the, think that an actor. I, I don't know. I mean, it's Al Franken beyond, has made it and he does it. I wouldn't give him a A plus, but and I don't follow Al Franken's politics. I'm sure that most of the stuff that comes out of his mouth would horrify me. But you know, there, there's there's comedians, and yet you have to have a, a little bit of a sense uh, of humor. And and, and you know what? The, the, even if they're, I mean, I'm sure there's great people that are that are actors or whatever that get that get involved in that. But right. the the amount of power that that industry has is it's it's staggering to me doug it's staggering that, that, that we <laughs> can, just, can can we you worship them almost as if they're you know almost as if they're gods look and... look all i mean if you look at uh, net neutrality it's all about netflix traffic it's all about people getting their freaking hulu and mostly their netflix their tv their hollywood faster and isps basically can't keep up it it, it and so what are they going to do? Well, they would like to have their own fast lane. Well, you know, uh, we know where that all goes. But really, the d- demand and what's driving ISPs to, to, to really, uh, you know, push for this, I, I think at least a lot, or the industry to, to, uh, you know, tap this is that people want it so bad. My point is that, you know, I, I, it might be. Uh, over an overreaction or maybe an overstatement that, you know, every evening here in the United States of America, 90 percent or you know 75 percent plus uh, of the bandwidth is being tapped by Netflix. And it's people wanting to watch Hollywood. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I need to get my TV show. So they're all on the net now. And that's why the net's overwhelmed. And yeah. so, you know, it's a long debate about whether or not, you know, this packet or that packet is equal and who gets preferential treatment and what that'll ultimately be used. Uh, to I just do want the mass coronal ejection so I can, I can get out there and <laughs> me, and, me and Craig can get out there and use our Mose and the Gaunts to have, you know, to provide some wild edibles. <laughs> you know, actually I had this great piece that would probably, uh, I, I think that most people see past it, but basically it makes the argument that the second amendment is no longer able, even the U.S. citizenry being well-armed, is not able to produce revolutionary or political change in the current system that we have today. That That's kind of a misnomer that so many people think that, well, you know, I've got my guns. And yeah, in that kind of situation, of course, you know, that being excluded, but that, you know, the, the idea that we still have, you know, the steel, we still have gunpowder, we still have the ability to protect ourselves. Right. That, it provides a false sense of, of freedom and security because obviously I don't care how well armed anybody out there, all of you are. If you have, you know, a hundred SWAT guys uh, on your house coming, you yeah. know, <laughs> descending, uh, uh, on you, uh, at three in the morning and they hit your house with a microwave cannon or a sound weapon, they literally stun you and knock you and the dog out. I mean, if, you know, paramilitary that, using high tech weaponry, uh, directed energy weapons and other crazy stuff that, you know, comes out of skunk works. They hit your house. There's nothing you can do about that. So yeah, I don't care how many guns you may have. That doesn't, doesn't change the, it doesn't make you any, I guess, uh, you know, safer against the government or government, uh, intrusions into our right. lives because they're moving on every other front and they might let us keep our guns for another, you know, 30 or 40 years, but really with the amount of weaponry that they have, high tech weapons that, I mean, far exceed. I mean, you've seen these things, these new, uh, 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 guns that can shoot around corners. Yeah. I mean, you're just looking at the technology and yeah, it's, it's pretty beta, but it's already here. It's expensive. 20 years from now, I mean, the government and government agents are going to have guns that shoot around corners and you're going to be paying, you know, five dollars for every seven point six two by thirty nine Russian round that you can find out there. Yeah. So 
Yeah, it's just it was interesting to read it because a lot of people kind of equate the Second Amendment to the ability to be free. But, you know, look around. <laughs> we are anything but. But we are heavily. Yeah, armed. but, you know, tech techno. I agree, Doug. I agree that you're never going to out arm. You're never going to be out tech, you know, the newest thing. Uh, but there is something to be said. You know, uh, Stalin said, uh, speaking of his tanks, you know, that, that were that were technologically uh uh inferior right to to the other uh allied powers uh and talking about that you know qu- quantity uh in, in, in the quality of the tanks use quantity has a quality of its own and you know this still is a nation that in, there is far more uh, armed uh citizens uh, i don't care what corner shot kind of weapon that you have if if it got to the point of a revolution and a, even a small percentage of those people decided enough is enough. We're taking this country back. Uh, you know, it, th- I, I think it's what do you, you, how far can that technology uh, invade, right? How far could it go on an individual I, I, basis? Very. Individual, it's unlimited. An individual, unlimited, it's unlimited. Yeah. But right. in a mass type of event, now forget about it. So what? You, you have some yeah, technology. but you're not going to have. I mean, you don't have a forward front. You don't have a really, you know, a battle general or anything. There's kind one of word you're leaving. You were, you're leaving out the word yet, yet, yet. Doug Owen. Yet, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, yeah. but you're right. I mean, if you're if you're thinking that you're gonna you know hunker down and you know, stay in your house and and defend, forget about it, man. I mean, individually, uh, it, you know that's why united united we stand, divided but, we but fall. The, but the whole idea is that if it's so bad, if the, if the government does things that are so egregious uh, that sooner or later the police will you know join you, and so will everyone else. And if it gets to you know, at some point, if you don't have the the public support and right. the will and initiative of people to support that system, then it's going to fail no matter how much. Uh, I mean, that's right. Iraq's a perfect example. We can spend a trillion dollars on killing and, people. And we have. And we have. And uh, look at the fruits of that labor. And it's, is, it, is it because we didn't spend enough? Is it because we just couldn't stay the course is it because we just didn't kill every person left or yeah. you know put the rest of them in a cage because that seems to be uh the uh the solution here uh giving yeah, every I, person I, in this country a brain scan is that how we keep people safe from you know kids killing you at school well that <laughs> you know it's so a country that'll do that to its own people you can only imagine how fantastical and stupid the foreign policy is going to be right I mean, yeah uh, Hillary Clinton doesn't know what an automatic weapon is and who has them and who doesn't. I mean, if she doesn't know the particulars on that, I bet you she doesn't know a lot of particulars about most things. Um, you know, <laughs> and yeah, only- I, 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 I agree with you. I mean, it's it's it it's almost like it's a, a failing you know a failing system that that needs to do this in order <laughs> to hang on to power and control. Well, yeah. And- and you know, I, I think that uh, leverage is used on these shootings. And again, this four, this one every four days in the school, I got to investigate that because that to me is just that's that doesn't seem. Well, I hope it. I hope it goes I down. Mean, I'm going to find. Every, I know I'm going to. Every. I know I'm going to go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm, no, I was just going to say that every day that we don't have one, then that statistic's going to be better for 2014. But, but the point is that we have you know 30, 40 of them, 50 of them. It seems like a huge amount of of violence, uh, yeah. but. It's it's really not, and uh, you know, it's nothing worse than a weekend in Chicago. Right, you, exactly. You, you hear about fifteen people being shot over the weekend, like, oh my god! And they're like, oh, that's no big deal. That's just, that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah, and, that, Better than and that's a great point. It's a great point. But when you hear that stat, it 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 kind of, I mean, that that stat rattled me. One one every four days in a school. Uh, but right when you look at the number of the population, the amount of guns that are in this country, and let's not forget one thing, right? All of the all the gun control legislation, all they, look, they can't yeah, do let's it. Let's talk they, about how many cops have shot people that were unarmed in the back this year. You'd probably be cut, horrified by or that handcuffed, number. <laughs> or handcuffed, yeah. laying on the ground. But but he's a five foot eight, two hundred seventeen pound bodybuilder. My, we th- had my to kill point him. exactly. I mean, the cop is ten times more likely to kill you than a terrorist. Right. Okay? That's and, a good point. That's right. And it's a that's true. A great that's a real stat. And see, you're more yeah. apt to believe that because you know. We, yeah, I know. And and here's the other thing I do know, and I didn't get to say it. And if Craig hears this conversation, uh, uh, then he's going to be mad that I didn't say it. All of these, all of them, all, and it seems like in every state that these occur, except for Oregon. I don't think Oregon's too wacko on gun control laws. But certainly every single one of these places that did have occurred has been a gun-free zone. So, uh, you know, you can, you can outlaw whatever the hell you want. 
uh, but you're you're not going to get rid of crazy. And I think, you know, there's no. going to be crazy people that do crazy crap. It's, it's on both it sides. Is. I mean, you know, having somebody armed at the front desk, is that going to turn away a crazy person that doesn't care if they die? No. It, 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 having every teacher in that school armed, if you don't care if you die, is that going to d- dissuade you? Maybe, but probably not. Now, it, it, is that going to dissuade some people? Yes, but everybody wants to make it a black and white issue always. Right. You know, oh well, if you had all, if we, if everybody had a gun, then they wouldn't do that. You know, and you're like, well, that's well, they might, <laughs> they, they might still, they and, might, they, you know, they'll just get shot. Have the, you know, whoever's but, trained. But would it turn away a lot of other people? Yes, it would. It's sure true. Would. It would. It would definitely. You don't have minimize. any tar- you, Suddenly, your target-rich environment of helpless individuals. Changes, you know, so that that uh, dynamic changes a little if bit. Every and if every idiot had a gun, would you have more people accidentally shooting one another? Absolutely. Yep. I mean, yep. I, I look at Raw Story, then that's one of the, you know, professionally offended websites where it's always about right wing crazies and people accidentally shooting their family members because it's very anti Second Amendment. And it, you know, I, I don't think that the government should take your right away from you, but people, you know, shoot them. There's a guy that shot himself in his penis the other day, you know? And so it's like, wow, you know, I mean, if that doesn't deter you from wanting to own a gun, then I I don't know what will, but it's, it's like, Ooh, see this guy shot himself in his penis. That's why we need more (laughs) gun control. If the government just had to register with every time that you saw a psychologist, when you were, you know, at your government education camp, then we could get rid of all of this. I'm like, you're the same people that get upset about the terrorist watch list having over a million people, babies, children, pilots. Okay. If you have a terrorist watch list, it's completely garbage. You had quotas right. with air marshals. I mean, all the garbage in, garbage out of that database. It's, it's meaningless for actual security, efficiency, and efficacy. It's not going to happen. It's just, it's stupid. Now apply, it's, it's apply that emergent. to any government registry. Okay. Doug Owen, he is crazy. He said that uh, he doesn't like what the government's doing. Or God forbid, you know, one of the things I just wanted to mention, there's this teacher that was playing video games. He mentioned the fact that he questioned the government and mentioned Sandy Hook uh, not buying into the government story. They fired him. I'm yeah, telling you, the, the, the Sandy Hook deal, uh, anybody, it's become like almost – Nazi uh, or you know Hitler worship. I mean, it's 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 completely taboo, and the government is going after people. Not not just the government, but the media and people in general are so offended. And it's it's the new nine eleven. You could talk about nine eleven being an inside job now. You can say that, and people they don't get too offended because everybody's had a taste of it, and like, oh, you're right. just an idiot. You 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 don't think the way I think, okay? Uh, and it's because the the time has passed and it's okay. I remember back in 2003, if you said 9-11 was an inside job and the government uh, turned a blind eye or it, it really, I mean, Michael Moore's, you know, movie, uh, Fahrenheit 9-11, really, right. I, it opened my eyes. Just the fact that we let the Bin Laden family fly out of the country <laughs> when right, every right. other, uh, every other plane and jet in the country had been grounded. But the pe- one of the guys, the ringleader, the alleged leader of this event, you let his family fly out scot free. Uh, Michael Chertoff did this personally. I mean, those are the kind of things that, you know, maybe you know, look at Building Seven. That doesn't bring you know to the table, but it was one that that was one of the biggest, I think, you know, smoking guns that really had me. You know, taken back. And I yeah. remember my brother-in-law saying, damn, you know, that is crazy, man. I'm like, dude, I don't trust none of this. I don't trust it. I never did. It's all bullcrap. <laughs> yeah, all but you're bullcrap. making it, you're, you're making a parallel how that, you know, in 2003, you'd have been smacked down. Oh, yeah. And you but, were, but, you were. People would get it, really legitimately mad. And yeah. I remember when Opie and Anthony would have, you know, people that were, uh, you know, they'd have the, the loose change guys and then they would have other people like Nico Hoft who, uh, you know, would, would, would say that, you know, it was a hoax and there was, you know, these were all holograms and everybody was infighting and it was this crazy daily uh, debate about, you know, what kind of inside job 9-11 was. And, you know, <laughs> I think back and it was like, that was when conspiracy theory was innocent and there was only a few things to debate. <laughs> then the now crash it's corrupt. And, oh, yeah. I mean, now I hear, here's a perfect example. I think we can wrap it on this, but you'll all like right. this one. 
cluster of central banks have secretly invested $29 trillion into the market to prop it up. Another conspiracy theory becomes conspiracy fact. FT reports, quote, a cluster of central bank investors has become major players on world equity markets. The report, end quote, to be published this week by the official Monetary and Financial Institutions Forum confirms $29.1 trillion in market investments oh. held by 400 public sector institutions in 162 countries, which could potentially contribute to the overheated asset prices. China's state administration on foreign exchange has become, quote, the world's largest public sector holder of equities, according to officials. And uh, that's a hell of a bag to be holding there. Uh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but anyway, it goes on here. Uh, leverage position, Citadel uh, had huge leverage uh, against this. And, um, well, it is something that when I remember a few years ago, if you said, hey, the Federal Reserve's injecting money into the markets and they're manipulating it, it's all, it's all facade, they're going to steal the money. People are like, you are crazy, dude. You're just crazy. And I was like, ah, I'm telling you, they're, they're, they're doing it right now. They're setting, because they were doing all these, you know, things like getting rid of, the uh, Glass Steagall Act, and you know, right, the, w- and that, letting bank holding company or bank investment companies be bank uh, holding companies, creating and, huge amounts of leverage, and even right. it even got worse. You know, I it was mean, consolidating. It was consolidating thousands and thousands of regionals, putting in the power of fewer and fewer. So yeah, and and if you just said that, well, yeah, I think in a, in a large extent, if you said that now. You'd still have that, uh, you know, be like, uh, the Dow Jones is almost seventeen. Well, now it's points. it's it's become the the new argument is. Well, what the Federal Reserve did by injecting $29 trillion into the market. And, of course, the people that get the money directly before inflation takes its toll get cheap money, and they get free money, and they're getting it for near nothing. They're, I mean, in, <laughs> they're probably getting paid to take money in Europe because they have negative interest rates now. But They, they are. That's a fact. Go ahead. It, well, it just, I mean, it just goes to show you, uh, you know, what a, a global equity Ponzi scheme all of this has become. But yeah. uh, 29 trillion, if you told people that, uh, I remember when <laughs> back in two, I hearken back to 2008. Hold on a second. Before hearken, hearken, hearken music. To, oh, Do I have to bring my music thing to the show? I mean, I, I I'm thinking, oh, yes, we need to go back to 2008. Hearken. We hearken back to 2008. Hank Paulson asking for $750 billion, which was an arbitrary number uh, right. that they pulled out of thin air. We just needed a lot of money. That was a huge deal. Yeah. I remember uh, rate, the, uh, you know, the Bush administration rating the Treasury for whatever it had at the time, getting going into petty cash. Now that would be petty cash. That used to be the Treasury. 750 yeah. Yeah, 750 oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's nothing. Anymore. That's just candy bar money. That's, that's just uh, drinks for Pelosi's uh, whore crew on the private <laughs> jets, her and, her and uh, Michelle Obama's vacations. Yeah. Uh, here 700, $750 billion ain't what it used to be. It sure isn't. It's just, you know. I wouldn't yeah. call it chump change because I mean, obviously. Yeah, I'd call it. I'd call it. Uh, yeah, one third of the occupation of Iraq. I'd be yeah, pretty. I'd be pretty happy if I had it, to be quite honest. But uh, anyway, um, I think I'd buy everybody a T-shirt. Yeah. So, uh, well, and, and even secretly investing twenty nine trillion dollars hasn't uh, saved us. And apparently, the only thing that's going to help the economy now is either, uh, according to Charlie McGrath's. Uh, projections a false flag yeah. or uh more war according to the yeah. new york times both, a, both. Uh, <laughs> but no both both are gonna happen we're gonna and, have and what did i say flag. for 2014 what did uh, i say uh, buy gold no, no what did you say invest in evil 2014 oh, that's, right. that's 20... right the t-shirt invest in evil well that it's happening that's what's gonna happen. i don't know if it's 2014 it could be because we have this uh, midterm Evil, election. I, evil's going up. I mean, yeah. Lockheed Martin, Beechcraft, all of these people that uh, make money off of evil are doing Ready. very well. And we're turning and we're we're allowing. I, I am so convinced that our hands are all over ISIS that uh, that we're, we're turning that. I see that as a way to lure in uh, Iran and, and just completely destabilize that. And, you know, Israel uh, is shaking in their boots. So you don't know what could happen uh, from that side as well. But at any minute, that could turn into a complete and utter, uh, you know, uh, very, very scary, doomy situation uh, for the planet. Don't leave out Ukraine. Don't leave out Eastern Europe because they can't, NATO can't push any further east. And they're seeing the results, you know, th- this pushback 
by by the east saying enough is enough and and you can see that it's the oligarchs trying to set up and rule as oligarchs and and they're enlisting the help of people such as joe biden's son to to legitimize this and to fast track it uh into their uh, uh acquisition of power so the world is a very very doomy place and central banker would not be denied has won the race but i want to thank a few people who have helped us uh continue to come out here and do this every week 46 weeks running uh absolutely commercial free no interruptions and alfred s my man sent a uh, 100 bucks to me and doug thank you very much alfred s and uh ken m thank you very much also for uh for your donation i greatly appreciate it and doug you can thank me because i just wired you some money oh yeah 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 uh randy wrote us in urbanale iowa gave us 20 bucks he said thanks for Hello? thanks for being awesome and still being there Sorry about that. And uh, sure. so, Randy, uh, thank you for that, and we do appreciate it. I want to mention that uh, Ken's, Ken's website is actually uh, one that, that I'm very familiar with, uh, and some of you New World Order know-it-alls that may have been educated by BrassCheckTV.com, which is a, a longstanding uh, video website or directory of uh, YouTube videos and other videos, documentaries, uh, topic-based. It's kind of a good repository. Anyway, uh -huh. um, you, you trend on there, and he puts your videos onto the um, onto the website, and uh, they, good do, man. they do very well there. So, I uh, definitely want to give a plug to Brass Check TV for that. And I think I, t I talked to Ken actually today, and he's going to be running uh, news feeds from BlacklistedNews.com uh, on his uh, website. So that's, outstanding. I mean, it's kind of a twofer if you go over there and you, you can directly get back to, you know, the hot topics that you know that Charlie McGrath and I will somehow wedge into this discussion. It's not supposed to be too doomy, uh, but uh, a little uh, doomy, maybe a little doomy. Yeah. And uh, uh, anyway, so thanks to all those people. You guys do uh, help us out. We do put a lot of time into it uh, just to, to aggregate the news and try to keep ourselves aware of it. We put a lot of time and effort into that and doing the hour program. Uh, it, you know, there's a there's a lot that that goes into it, and there are yeah. costs associated with uh, doing the show. I keep trying to talk Charlie McGrath into buying a better microphone, so I can't sound, afford it, Doug. He I'm on the ragged edge, smooth and silky, and uh, I'm on the ragged edge. But great people like Ken and Alfred are pushing me closer to that. Uh, to that new mic and it can come to fruition for Charlie McGrath and the show. So if you want, and, and maybe one day doing video, I know that Charlie and, and some, a few people think that uh, for some reason that people will be, I think if we do that, listen us. to me and this is the first time it's going to be really entertainment though, staring at you and I talking, I'm a really good looking guy. So probably, yeah, it will be. I mean, I'm ridiculously <laughs> good looking, you know that. Yeah, but you're already giving it away for free. Why, why did well, I that's what pay? I'm saying that, that maybe there needs to be uh, a premium, choice you know that that if you want the whole video i don't know what do you uh you know we'll, we'll obviously we, we, talk need, we need support and we need thoughts and, and viewpoints we'll put out a yeah. maybe we should send out a newsletter you can subscribe at doomcast.com for all of that also the doomer essentials you can also buy a doomcast shirt show your pride and get people asking you you don't even have to act, tell people what doomcast is if you wear one of the t-shirts at blacklistednation.com or just click over from doomcast.com uh, you'll start the conversation. They'll be like, what the hell is that? What the hell is Doomcast? I, I was wearing my, my Punisher Doomcast t-shirt uh, to this weekend, and I had three people ask me, Doomcast, what's that? And I was like, oh, it's a podcast I do. And they're like, oh, Check no, it out. Pretty cool. I got a whole softball team who's really sucking it up, man. I mean, we're, we're sitting at it. it <laughs> they're drunk. Oh. They're falling they're off just, the bench. They're falling apart, man. They're, they're off. <laughs> they, they went off the rails. I think I think we're <laughs> three we and update? six. No? Oh, three uh, and six? Yeah. Uh, I think we're three and six. They're giving up. They're they're hammered. They're the oh, bad news bears. I, you know, we and and we we should go ahead and get some Washington Redskins T-shirts going because they lost their government protection for their copyright because uh -oh. of their heinous, uh, heinous, evil, it, racist, yeah. racist, d disgusting, uh, label uh, Redskins. Yeah. So. Uh, you can you can now sell res, Redskins paraphernalia. So I, I I think that this is interesting only in the fact that why why do you need the government to protect you from other people possibly uh, you know making money off of your likeness or off of yeah. your brand? I think that you know what we do is a completely open Creative Commons model, and we hope yeah. that people share and you know 
do mixes and create content and contribute love to it. content. I love the mixes. I love. I did one this week. I haven't done one for a while, so I put one out and it's getting. It's uh, I think up to I don't know fifteen sixteen hundred. But I love making them. They crack me up making them. Uh, Craig's cracks me up every week uh, when he he'll be he's probably cutting together stuff right now. But uh, he puts them out every week. And and guys, if you want to participate and you can't do it financially, I get that. Uh, but if you want to help in other ways, you contact Doug at Doug at BlacklistedNews.com. You can uh, subject it Doomcast, or you can contact me at info at WideAwakeNews.com. This has been Doomcast number. Did you have something else you want to get into? No, I think we I think we hit everything. We, Rockefeller's right. son dying. Eh, that's kind of interesting. We'll talk about the billionaire philanthropist. No, no, no. We, on, we only do new dying? doomy news here. Okay, not, well, not that, that might actually be happy for some of the yeah, people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> my name's Charlie McGrath. My website's wideawakenews.com. My co-founder and friend is Doug Owen. His website is blacklistednews.com. Please see all of the Doomcast efforts at doomcast.com. You can subscribe there. You can listen. You can watch videos from people who are all fellow doomers who, are, who we are posting their stuff there you can see the great work of craig simpson there and uh, just hang out and have a good time so doomcast.com info at wideawakenews.com is my handle or my uh, uh email doug at blacklistednews.com is his email contact us if you want to hear from you we'll be back next week with doomcast number 47